Good morning everyone, happy Saturday. It's quarter to ten and I've just finished uploading yesterday's Vlogmas um, and editing it. It was a three hour editing job. So <laughs> I'm just about to start cutting Ian's coat for today. I have come across a couple of problems. The first one is when I overlocked the first side piece, the um, differential feed was set too tight and it gathered the sides up and it shrunk the piece of wool and then the piece of fabric and then in trying me trying to iron it back out again I think I may have shrunk the wool with the steam so I don't know if I can manage to stretch that piece back out I probably I don't think I've got enough fabric to recut it but it's coming up as about an inch shorter than the other side um, but it's whether or not I can stretch the lines to meet each other when I come to sew it it's a bit of a nuisance so last night I cut the front, the back and the two front sleeve pieces. I've got the two back sleeve pieces to cut now and that's what I'm going to get on with. If you can see me laughing, it's because I'm listening to the Frank Skinner show on Absolute Radio. Frank Skinner does a show with Emily Dean and Alan Cochran on a Saturday morning, and I really recommend it. It's a real laugh-along show. I have reached meltdown point with it and so I'm going to step away for a bit and I've got a cracking headache so I'm going to go and have a bit of a lie down. I've got all the main pieces cut out and one facing, front facing. I'm going to have to piece together the other facing and I knew that that was going to happen because I just didn't anticipate needing so much fabric because this pattern has such a large repeat that it's basically almost taking a metre of fabric just to cut one piece and then you're having to cut the next piece in the next metre and I'm sure a cleverer person than me could have worked it all out in advance and worked it out more efficiently but because I wasn't cutting on the fold I suppose I should have made two of each pattern piece and laid it all out but I wouldn't have had enough room to lay out four metres of fabric in one go and you would need to it was just a bit of a, it's a bit of a headache. Welcome back to the yellow chair. Oh wait, there's no one there. Hang on a minute. I'm sat facing the yellow chair. I am in bed. I've come for a little lie down and I'm just going to see if yesterday's video has rendered and uploaded. And if it is, if it has, then I'll do the little vlog icon. In fact, I did it last night. I was so organised. And um, upload it. See my fairy light wall behind me? This is my bed of activities. I'm going to see if I can get that vlog up and then I'm going to read the instructions for the McCall's pattern that came free in the Love Sewing that I bought yesterday because I really like the look of it. I was just about to buy the Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons Rosa and then this popped up and it's pretty good duplicate I think. Um, I'm going to carry on reading my book which is looking absolutely brilliant. I think I will use it loads. It's just got so many little tips that other books haven't really seemed to include. I looked up Sarah Alm and it looks like she teaches at I think the University of Berkeley or a college in Berkeley anyway she's in California. I thought she'd be like a vlogger, a blogger rather or something, but she just seems to be a sewing educator. Anyway, yes, I would definitely recommend this to anybody who sews their own clothes, is kind of intermediate level and is wanting to know a bit more about how to alter patterns to get a better fit and move darts, things like that, customise them to their own designs. If reading proves a bit much, then I might work on my fashion illustration. So these croquis are not illustrated by me, but the clothes that they're wearing are. 
so I've been trying to get better using these art markers graphic markers that you can blend yeah so you can get all these croquis in different poses and then obviously design your garments that you want to sew up this is a simplicity skirt that I can't remember the number of this is going to be self-drafted I think these are the McCall's cords that I wore the other day this is a shirt that I want to make this um, McCall's shirt might do this is a self-drafted pinafore that I've just made that I want to make in the lilac corduroy I want to make a tartan skirt and oh look I've got pattern suggestions here top self-drafted skirt S817 and then various pattern references they might be vintage ones these are the McCall's cords that I want to make up in like a maroon corduroy it looks much more purple there that, that I've illustrated it with like a rose pink top I've got some teal cord as well and then this is my latest illustration I want to make the self-drafted pinafore in red and I've got this very nice fabric that I would like to make this top it's pink and red I really like that picture and it shows my leopard skin brogues that I just bought Well, it's 20 to 2 in the afternoon I've been and tidied up so that everything's ready um, and everything's hidden for when Ian comes back which will be about half three I've been reading the Palmer Pletch information that comes with this pattern and it's absolutely brilliant it looks great for fitting issues so I'm really looking forward to giving that pattern a go and I've got some really nice red needle cord that it will just look brilliant in I plan to make a shirt like that so that's going near the top of the list I have just made myself a banana and well not made myself a banana got myself a banana and a hot cross bun and I'm having I'm having a lovely cup of milky chai tea uh, and a squish and then I'm gonna have a sleep because I just feel absolutely bang out knackered see you in a bit I'm just catching up on Alex's vlogmas this is Alex Ju Judge Sews um, I'm also watching Rachel from Stitched Up, obviously, she's my pal, and I have watched some of the Stitch Sisters, although I'm getting a bit behind on those, and I'm also following the So This Is Vlogmas. Which Vlogmas are you following, apart from this one, obviously? Hello. Good evening so here's how my day is looking after I spoke to you last I had a not really a nap but more of a bang out for an hour's sleep which was good but I woke up with an absolutely splitting headache the same headache that's been plaguing me for the last year it's worse when I stand up if I go down low and then I stand up I get this pulsing headache and Jody knows we've discussed it at length um, I'm under various people to find out what the hell's happening with all these symptoms. I feel like I've been hit by a brick bat. I'm shaking. I can hardly stand up. Anyway, <laughs> you really wanted to know that, didn't you? Ian's come home. We had a little hello, but he's had to turn around and go straight back, back out again because it is his old work friend's leaving do. Ian used to work for John Lewis for 20 years. He's got a lot of good friends from there. He took redundancy about two years ago to, in fact, yeah, just two years ago in November, just gone, to be my carer. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ian isn't my partner. He's actually my best mate. And we have got such a brilliant arrangement. It really suits us both. We are obviously very happy and close together and our arrangement works really, really well. I know people just assume that we are kind of married or, you know, in a romantic thing. But we're not. Um, it's just uh, what I like to call the modern family. Um, now I'm going to go out and hug a tree. So Ian's had to go back out. So 
we're in complete Mother Hubbard territory as regards food. I've got no food in the cupboard, so I'm going to have beans and cheese on toast and watch an episode of House, which is what I'm binge watching at the moment, and um, see if I feel any better. I had hoped to wongle tonight, but if I carry on feeling the way that I am feeling, I will be having dinner and then going straight to bed. So I hope your Saturday is as rock and roll as mine is, and I shall see you later. Just thought you'd like a shot of my Instagram worthy dinner. I'm scared. Betsy likes the house too. That's not a way to live. That's the kettle boiling. It's loud, isn't it? I had my beans on toast and a sit down, but I'm still feeling whacked. So I've decided to make myself a hot chocolate and take it to bed and maybe have a little browse on the internet. Um, and by that, I mean look at fabric shops. I've got a lovely frothy hot chocolate Ovaltine. I've got my laptop. I've got my hot boot warming my toes. And Betsy will probably be through in a minute. What else could a girl want on a Saturday evening? Hey, I was watching House just now. And the storyline was about a patient who was in... Uh, had, they had got locked-in syndrome. And somebody, one of the doctors came in and was talking to him about how the brain is a muscle. And they were basically told that they'd got to keep the patient occupied mentally and entertain the patient. Betsy's just come in um, because the brain's a muscle and if you don't work it, it atrophies and I thought yeah I think that that's really what my last couple of years of being locked in the house has kind of done for me in terms of my brain is just kind of rotting away and my body actually I walk so few steps a day that all my muscles are wasted so then when I do try and do something I'm absolutely knackered and if I had doctors that were interested in rehabilitating me and getting me out and getting me physically active and getting me mentally active, I think I'd do a lot better. But doctors at the moment, I've been told that as a person with bipolar disorder, it's better that I don't overexert my brain because of the risk of uh, triggering a manic episode and that I should get used to being depressed. <laughs> really quite very backwards at attitudes we've still got. Um, I mean, you just can't believe that that wasn't even the doctor that I saw the other day. That was one of my previous doctors. You can't believe that doctors are telling patients that. You know, I, I was sort of ap appealing to my doctor this week and saying... I have got an inquiring mind, I've got a lively mind, I need to be stimulated and there's just zero interest in what I'd call occupational therapy um, as a way of getting, trying, trying to recover from bipolar episodes or depressive episodes, no interest whatsoever. I know that if I went to the gym I would be able to cure my depression without antidepressants I know I would be able to but there's no way I can get there without having some professional help to help me get over the barriers that I you know that I encounter just trying to get out the house trying to get in the shower put my makeup on all these things are uh, like enormous barriers that I have to overcome and I know that when I talk to you lot there's loads of you who encounter similar barriers, so I know I'm not, you know, I'm preaching to the converted, aren't I, really? Anyway, I don't really know what the point of that was, but it was it just struck me as interesting. And I do think that doing this Vlogmas is really helping me because I guess normally I don't... Maybe you're my therapist. I don't normally speak to people much. You know, me and Ian, we kind of laugh and mess about and chat about daily things, but... It's not reflective in the same way. Anyway, I am waffling. I think I'm going to say goodnight for tonight because, yeah, I think I've, I've really done nothing of interest today, really. Um, so I will hope that tomorrow will be a bit more interesting day and I shall wish you lots of love. And I can't blow a kiss because I'm holding the camera with one hand and my hot chocolate with the other. But I send you love from Camden. Bye. <laughs>